Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Progeny Podcast. Today's guest is Zainab Al Kadhmi. Zainab Al Kadhmi is an experienced qualified accountant and a financial advisor for businesses. In 2020, she set up her own business, Aya Home Deco, a lifestyle brand with a distinct style to bring glamorous, elegant, and classic designs into homes. Zainab is also the co-founder of Empowered Women Network, a community initiative to bring women together to grow, elevate, and empower each other. She aims to inspire and encourage others to follow their passions and dreams, no matter how scary it may seem. Work hard, be patient, stay humble, and let your passion be your drive not to give up. Zainab, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for making time for the Progeny podcast. Uh, I'm very good friends with uh, both Ahmed and Yusuf, uh, your <laughs> brothers, and um, Al Haj Abu Zainab, your respected father, who I had the honor of going Umrah with. Uh, I've had the honor of going on many trips with, and um, I've always actually wanted to have Abu Zainab on the podcast. So maybe in the in the future, because he's done so much for for the community, yeah. and a lot of uh, people my age have a good relationship with Al Haj Abu Zainab. So inshallah, one day we get Ammo on um, on this podcast. But Zainab, um, you've done so much uh, <laughs> from your bio. We can tell uh, first about your um, profession, which is an accountant. Um, are you still doing that, or have you stopped? Uh, so, um, yeah, so I'm a qualified accountant of many years. Um, I'm still currently uh, working uh, as an accountant. Um, I qualified in 2009 and have worked in many industries, uh, ranging from telecoms to real estate and fund management. How do you juggle everything? Because you're, you're also a, a wife and as well as a, a mother um, to two children. Yes. <laughs> uh, how do you... And, and now, obviously, you've got your own business my as own well. My own business as well, yeah. So I have my own uh, business that I set up a year ago, Aya Home Decor, a home interior brand, um, and I'm a mother of two. Um, I think the way I've, I approach life is I just try to pre-plan my week, and I'm kind of realistic with targets that I have for my business. So I know that I'm working full-time and that I'm managing the business, and so I set myself weekly targets that are achievable. Um, and, and I think this is where... You know, when you're planning or running a business, if you don't set yourself objectives, you know, you feel a bit lost. So that's the way I kind of set my objective, objectives for the business. And then I plan my home life. Um, family always comes first. So, you know, whatever my daughter might need with me in the evenings, I plan it. So I give both of them my time. Um, if they need me to take them to certain events for school. How or, old are they? So the eldest is 15 and the youngest is 11. MashaAllah. So they, they need them on that, yes. <laughs> that <laughs> age. Well, they need them at any age. But um, 2020, COVID year, yes. you set up a, a business. Yes. Some might think that's not the <laughs> best of ideas during... Why why did you go set up your own business during a period where, you know, we had maybe for some financial difficulties? That's that's right. Um, I think in, in the pandemic, everyone um, had a chance to have a bit of me time. <laughs> a bit of time to think, reflect. Mm. And I think in that time, it really gave me time to really think about what else I wanted to do. So I'd peaked in my career as an accountant. I've always been a financial advisor for businesses and I'd always wanted to set up my own business, but it had to be an area I was passionate about. And I always found myself uh, sketching designs for home, um, interior design. Um, and I thought, hold on, this is what I love doing. I'm always reading, teaching myself. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to go go for this. Um, especially when I was um, refurbishing my own property and I designed the aesthetic behind it. And I also found that when I was trying to find key pieces, they weren't around. So I decided that I was going to produce glam home decor, um, design the pieces and really, you know, bring something special. Um, and also it would be a lovely journey to be able to finally utilize my skill as a financial advisor who, who I know so much about because that's all I've ever done to finally put it into my own business. What makes your um, business or your home decor unique and different from others that maybe have also been around for maybe longer than yours? Yeah, so um, what I found is with my um, home interior, it's more about um, glam elegance. It's more about um, gold accents. So I try to design some of the pieces so they are different. Um, so I've designed um, cake stands and coasters and I've come up with uh, my own bone china collection for mugs. Wow. So it will be different because I've designed it and, you know, there isn't anything like that in the market. And at the same time, I'm always, 
you know, looking for feedback from consumers and then I'll come back and just maybe modify the product. And so I'm listening to my followers as well. Um, and I just always wanted to be able to create products where you can just, for example, have an area in your home that can really, it can really transform it. So a floral arrangement or, you know, a nice tray on a coffee table um, with um, candles and reed diffusers. They, they, can, they create that kind of, um, they complete the look, especially with the pandemic. We were all at home. Mm-hmm. And so your home had to be that that place of like calmness. It had to be that place where you you know you enjoyed, you know, like especially zoning in your home, finding maybe creating a reading space. So I try to always incorporate that when I'm producing my products, um, especially with my mugs. I really went into the design to make sure that the detail was really nice, so that you'd enjoy your coffee experience in a really nice uh, handmade bone china mug. Um, and so I really worked on the design behind that. And I hope to bring out a lot more designs. I'm really excited about that. Is at the moment, Aya, um, Home Deco, is that is it just yourself? Because you're talking about design. Is someone else designing with you? Or is it literally just you it's at the moment? It's me. Mo- it's just me. And how are, you, how are you coming up with these designs? and these? So I think with, with when you're creative, it really you have to be in that moment of when you're calm and you have that space okay. when there's no distraction. And then it just it just flows. Sometimes it flows when I'm I might be um, you know cooking and I'd be like oh my god I've got a really good idea and I have to quickly sketch it. You'll leave the food. Yeah. To burn. Yeah. No, no, I will leave. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Leave no. the food and then you'll just get, come up with there. <laughs> no, no. Or, or I might have a dream and I'd wake up in the morning and have to write it down. Um, or I'd yeah. So it, it all come up at, sometimes at different times. And I mean, I'm always like talking about my business and um, with my husband. I think he's sick of hearing me talk about my ideas. Is it just one room that you you? I'm guessing the whole home decor, the I home decor, mm-hmm. does the, every room in the house. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they're the accent pieces. So we do trays, coasters, um, pampas um, bouquets. Uh, we do ginger jars like vases. Um, so it's mainly for I think living area and kitchen area. Is that your favorite? Yes. rooms maybe yes because yes. I, I honestly believe that when you come home it's, it's, it's so important how you design that area mm. because it's that place of tranquility you want to retreat to at the end of the day and so those just just even a plant like i've been introducing more plants into my living room and recently mm. and i've created an area just the color of green and plants really creates that that sense of calmness for you to just retreat to at the end of the day i think it's important because um i again i asked i started this uh uh question with uh, questioning you you know you started your business during lockdown mm. is that the best of ideas but i it's important because i think during lockdown we got to spend more time at home exactly and then you don't want to be surrounded by maybe something that's boring or dull or maybe exactly. something that's going to put you down mm. especially if, if you're going to be with 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 your spouse and children you want to have some sort of decor that you I don't know, enjoy seeing, enjoy yeah. looking at. And it's scientifically proven that it affects your well-being, mm. how you design your space. You know, just thinking about how much light you get in the room, you know, and also just the colors that you use. You know, you could be, you can add a pop of color or you can go for neutral. So those were all important factors that when I decided to just go for this in the, in the pandemic, I thought, let me just go for it and we'll just see how it goes. It was a difficult time, but I persevered and I learned a lot through the journey. Alhamdulillah. And if people want to get in touch with Aya Home Decor to buy their stuff, they could visit your website, yep. which is? Which is ayahomedecor.com. And are you on social media? Yes. Yeah, so I have an Instagram page, Aya Home Decor, and that's where I try to create inspo for the followers um, in terms of styling. So you'll have, um, you'll see that I've done reels on how to do a beautiful tablescape for Ramadan, for example, mm-hmm. or how to style your coffee table. So it's not just about, you know, just selling my products. I wanted to give back by trying to give inspiration of how to style different areas in your home. If I'm not mistaken, you all, you've also done some some special stuff for Shahar Ramadan. Yes. Correct. So there is sort of an Islamic yes, touch to I the. I had to, of course. I mean, every last year I started it. Um, I did a, a Ramadan tray that was a decor item, and that was a, such a big hit. I, I was really surprised that we w- we were selling out and just having to restock very quickly to try and get the trays to everyone for Ramadan. So this year I came up with um, designing a Quran stand, something really special but simple. And, and also and also another tray that was an ayah Qur'aniya, which again was a hit. Um, you know, and now we've just got to dispatch our orders, inshallah, this um, on Monday. So we've got it's been, it's been very popular. <laughs> very and popular. Sh- inshallah, I, th- I think for the Shahar Ramadan, I think I saw the the Quran stand, which I th- I, th- yeah. I thought that was beautiful. 
Um, are you do offering any discounts for Shahr Ramadan? Oh there yeah, sell. I, yeah. I think I'm going to offer um, a discount. So stay tuned. Um, there will be a discount. Would you think your pr- your prices are fair? Or? I do stay com- very competitive because okay. I want I want to I want my items to be affordable. But that, you know, so I, I've tried to not price too high enough to cover my cost um, enough for me to make a decent profit, but also not be overpriced. Um, and it, you know, and, and everyone, everyone, I've come, I, I've done my research as well, like with pricing and feedback from customers. So you know, I'm quite happy with that. Looking at your business now, you know, 2022, do you think that the business has exceeded your expectation? Um, I am proud of how much I've I've done <laughs> within the last year. It's been an amazing journey. There is so much more for me to do. I mean, I've only touched on it. <laughs> there is so much more I want to bring to IO Home Decor and I'm really excited to show what's more that's coming. And um, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's definitely fun. The, the designing and bringing something different is definitely fun. And also sourcing different items that I've created, that I've chosen. And I think this is the key thing. I've, I've got an eye for style when it comes to home interiors and my followers love that. Something that you're also involved involved in and you're you're the co-founder if i'm not mistaken of empowered women network yes um how did that start up yeah so um i'm the co-founder of empowered women's network with dr farah who's um also with me on this uh, network group um so initially um when i started my business um on instagram i found it very lonely being on my own um, and I and I was just thinking at that time, you know, I would love to support other women who who might also be learning on their journey with setting up their business. So I started to search and connect with different women in our community who are also running a business. And so me and uh, Dr. Farah thought, well, why don't we just set up a small group and get all these girls together on one group in, on Instagram? So we did that. And the objective was that whenever they had a product um, or a service that they would launch, that we would all support that post and share it and through that that would create um, support for them but also growth because we've all got different followings and so we did that so and that became a success and the girls felt like they had a backbone they they they, fe- they felt even more motivated to keep posting mm-hmm. and so then um i created a few events brunch events i said girls let's meet up because we some of us have never seen each other mm. so we met up um and it was so refreshing to see the faces behind the brand because it was nice to hear about where they want to go with their journey it was good to hear about their struggles and also be able to advise each other help each other out um also gave me an opportunity as an accountant to give them um financial advice Mm. um you know strategic planning advice so i i always felt like i had a calling with using this skill that i had and i also you know i feel very strongly about supporting women so this was so lovely and the girls were so motivated like one girl was like i just feel so lost and she was telling us her struggle so we all helped her out um, with our ideas because we're all running businesses and it was just such a safe place to just be able to share that or how are you juggling you know running a business and family you know and um, everyone's in the same you know we're all like-minded people all in one space so one event led to another event and more women wanted to join amazing more women wanted to join so then me and farah thought you know what well, we need to go public with this because other women want to benefit from this mm-hmm. so then we set up and the Empowered Women Network um, page, and we opened it to everyone. And the aim of this is so that we are going to, um, so we're hoping to organize the next event after Ramadan, inshallah, where we're going to be bringing guest speakers, um, just touching on topics um, to do with business so that you've come out empowered, you've come back learning something new, and also um, be able to network with other women mm-hmm. in the same area and just celebrating um, the achievements in, in our community. The topic of, of women in our community has come up in previous podcasts quite a lot. Um, it has been a topic that, that has been discussed. Um, and I wanted to take get your take on, 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 on community and women. Um, obviously, um, you saw a gap mm-hmm. uh, and you saw there's a need for you to set up the uh, Empowered Women Network to help other women who have started up business. Generally, how do you see the the role of women in our community uh, and i'm talking mm-hmm. again iraqi muslim community in london okay so the way i mean with setting up this uh, network we saw the response was amazing and we saw the benefits of how sharing our experiences our skills with each other was really beneficial for the women and it made them feel not alone and through these networking events um we felt there was definitely a need 
And we felt we, these women should be celebrated. We're, there are so much professions in our community, but we're, they're all hidden away and we need to celebrate each other. And it was a nice place for them to come and feel proud of what they have achieved. We also wanted to empower all the women who might be stuck might be stuck they just can't make that next step thinking I can't do this because I've got a family or I can't do this because I don't have experience in setting up a business we wanted to be that 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 network where women can come to these events you know meet us speak to us um, and we can help help um, guide them and we hope inshallah in the future we'll, we're going to be the role models for the younger generation for our daughters um, we need to be able to have this set up for them so that for example when they're graduating from universities we have internships in these businesses for them we are having um, a database where we can connect them with with um, different um, businesses maybe interview preps you know maybe some mm. of us can go and help them with interview preps because they are, our community the, the graduates are not prepped some of them and, and I feel really this is what there's a struggle and I've seen it with 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 the women that I know again I'm going to choose my words carefully is is there enough being done by those maybe the uh, leadership positions for our women in, in the community uh, I haven't I haven't seen is there anything being done do you yeah think? I don't think there has been I mean I ha I haven't seen anything which is specifically tr helping like for example women in business I haven't seen anything that's prepping our graduates when they're going out in the real world for interview preps for connecting them i mean there are so many businesses in our community but is there an internship scheme where we can connect and get our, our, our the, the women in our community into these companies so this is where i see the future going you know you, you you've got you said you've got you've got two daughters um is there do you do you, are you looking at things positively for them in the future or do you think it's uh, it's negative because there's not enough within our community i'm talking again and in, in, in the general obviously society there's always there's always you know issues that, that have come up with equal <laughs> rights for men and women and so mm. on and so forth but i'm generally talking about our our community um hijabis uh face a lot of um issues and struggles that a lot of the brothers in the community don't understand mm. and cannot understand. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, I, I won't say just don't. It's very difficult because we can't place ourselves in that position. But sometimes you'll hear people maybe criticize certain hijabis or criticize certain um, work that they do. That they do. Mm -hmm. Do you look at the future in a positive way for your daughters, or do you think it's? I think in our community we have, you know, we, we can't disregard um, those who have, uh, you know, uh, done amazing projects um, for our community, for the youth, definitely. Like my, my daughter's in a teen club at the moment and she's absolutely loving that with um, with Muslim Family Initiative, which is amazing. And she comes back feeling like she's met up with her friends, you know, and they've created an atmosphere where they're debating topics, which is brilliant because there are topics that are not being spoken about that they're probably dealing with at high school so so definitely there is things being done but in terms of women in business and careers um i think we need to do more i definitely definitely think we need to do more i think definitely we need to help um in the future you know create leaders of our women you know so that they can lead in business if this if that's the area they want to go to and i and i feel like we need to guide the graduates because i know there are so many graduates that are not going into the jobs that they've done their degrees for because they mm. simply cannot get jobs because they've got no experience. Mm. But imagine if we have a database where we can connect, you know, with a, within our own community to provide those opportunities just to get their, just to just to get the, the experience they need after they, get, they graduate. So definitely that doesn't exist at the moment. And inshallah, I'm hoping through this that the network is going to grow bigger and bigger so that we're able to create something like, like this for the younger generation as well as help the women in business that are currently running their businesses. Yeah, everyone has, has obviously a passion. Um, I, I'm sure even 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 the the housewives that ha have the, the hardest job of looking after the kids and looking after the house also have, have certain passions. And that passion can be, you know, looking after the kids. Well, some may have a passion but are too scared to... Uh, take that first step yeah. towards achieving that um, or have a dream to do something and it's always that first step that first hurdle which is which is really hard um, what would your words of encouragement be to the sisters out there mm -hmm. who 
have a passion to do something uh, yet they feel it's too difficult or mm-hmm. they're too scared to actually go into maybe what they see as something mm-hmm. that's unknown or they see something that they may may think they will fail in yes yeah yeah I, th- i'm really glad you asked me this question because this is the one thing that that was stopping me from setting up my business at the beginning i was so scared of failing at this business and i mm. really had to really coach myself and really look at the concept of failure and and i think we need to change our mindset of what it what does it mean to fail you know um failing just means this this route that you're taking with for example going for this this product isn't working um okay so it might mean i need to look at a different product you know so we need to look at failure in a different way it's good to fail it's where the growth is going to come it's where we're going to learn um if you're running a business or you're trying to take that first step and it's not going to work out that's normal and this is what what we're trying to show as well through our networking and um, we're also currently working on a documentary on empowering women and we touch on you know on on failure because everyone sees the success story of businesses but no mm. one sees the journey mm. and that's what we want to show and so for anyone out there who really wants to set up something and they've got you know this passionate dream honestly just just go for it don't just put failure aside don't see it as a bad thing you know like I made a lot of mistakes but I learned from them and and for, through that I grew and, and I'm glad I made those mistakes because it led me to the right direction so you, you need to look at it differently and and I think this is what needs to change we need to look at failure as a different concept altogether it's a good thing we're learning there's going to be highs and lows with running a business and I'm just going to be here real with you it, it hasn't been all highs for me there were down days but you just got to pick yourself up and stay consistent and just keep doing what you're doing revisit your plan and just go back to why did you set your business up in the first place why did you want to do this how passionate like, how passionate are you about this do how you much re- do you want this yeah and do you and, and believe in yourself I think believing believing in yourself because that's really important that's what's going to keep you going and i think also having a support network um helps having my family support me with my business you know like you know they must be bored of me of how much i talk about my business mm. but tough luck <laughs> <laughs> tough <laughs> luck Ahmed and Yusuf. <laughs> yes <laughs> how, how important is it to have support from your from your near ones from your spouse your brother your sister your fo- yeah. how important is that support from those around you that network that that close bubble of people around you so um definitely my, my family have been amazing support so ahmed's already been on instagram so to have him support me when i first set up was amazing him and his wife Zainab um, they're very very known on Instagram and very successful and for them to advise me as well on the business um, having my brother Yusuf um, who's also a very smart mashallah um, consultant very good at public speaking um, really helped also coach me um, for um, speaking because I was on BBC radio for the everyday hustle so he helped prep me for that the Gadsies. yes he's <laughs> amazing um, and my husband who um, is um it works in consultancy as well in banking um and he he's amazing in the sense that i can always bounce ideas with business we share the same passion for business and sometimes you just need someone just to bounce off your ideas shall i go for this shall i do this shall i promote this um shall i go on this platform it's, it's nice to have a support network where you can actually just share your thoughts um and if, it, if it's not family it might be a friend you know but someone who's you know on the same mi- mindset as you and it's nice to be able to talk and that's why with the network with for the women you know some of them might have not had that in their families and so that this was a safe uh, place for them for them to express how they're feeling and where their struggles are we can't not mention Hajji Abu Zainab oh yeah my dad oh, sorry dad There's, by the way he's he's had a, he's had a shout out in a few of our podcasts yes <laughs> Sayyid Amman Akshawani gave him a shout out yeah uh, I think the Haraka boys that were here done a shout you know mentioned him and the work that he's done he's done a lot of work for the community for the yes. last 20 or so years yes <laughs> how is it how has he supported you personally not just in this business but throughout your life so my dad is just the most amazing support he has been my rock growing up and my inspiration and just seeing him while he was working as a research doctor and putting so much of his time into the youth while we were growing up because there was no one out there that looks after the youth like my dad and I saw how much nights he spent on the computer organizing trips, organizing the football. And I really aspire to have his work ethic. And he just, just his hard work was instilled in all of us. We all wanted to be hard workers like my dad. And he was always supportive. And, you know, whatever I wanted to do, he was behind me on it. He's like, Zenib, you can do it. 
that's it just work hard Zim you can do it you know like even like with this business and you know he was again supporting me sharing my websites with his colleagues um even coming on the podcast today I'm like Baba pray for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming on the podcast he's like of course you know Twakili and I'm like yes okay no he's amazing my dad's amazing and he's been an, a role model for us and for many in our community alhamdulillah does does the hijab hinder one's uh, route to s- achieving what they want Just yeah. success mm, i think back in my time when i started working in the city so i worked in the city in fund management where i was the only muslim the only muhajaba um in my time and that was a challenge um but it was a good challenge because i changed the way they thought about muslims um they they completely were like they obviously had already been brainwashed by media but when they met me and they saw how educated i was how well spoken um even the way i dress you know in the end of the day, i'm not coming with a abaya to work i'm coming dressed smart i come with colors on um they loved it they loved it and and they said you really changed our mindset and in every workplace i went to you know i got always asked different questions and i was open to being asked questions about hijab why do you wear it how do you feel they asked me about my family so i think times have changed it's probably easier now to to easier. Yeah, yeah i think it's easier there's more hijabis around there's more acceptance um you will still find workplaces where they're shocked when they first meet you but then that's more of a challenge to really you know win them over and let let them get to know you and uh, on your website you, you mentioned patience yes. quite a lot um uh, i'm guessing this, you've seen you've had to be patient throughout uh you know starting up this business how important is it someone to have sabr patience when they're starting up their business mm. seeing maybe that they're not achieving what they want to achieve or they're not reaching the goals that they had put themselves uh, a target for at the beginning of the of starting up their business i think um with running a business you really learn a lot and the one thing i learned is it, you i think because i've been successful in my accounting career and i've achieved every step of the way that i'm like okay this is not happening overnight here with this business and you got to be real with yourself it's not going to happen overnight there's a lot of hard work that goes into a business and patience is really 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 important and so that's why i keep reminding myself just be patient um you know th- you know it will come and alhamdulillah like i was patient in the last year and the business has grown and 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 i think you've got to be patient also with with yourself like you know sometimes you know you you put high expectations um on yourself and you put pressure you know like you've got to be realistic with what you can achieve with the time you have as well alhamdulillah i think uh, the the values that you mention uh on your website uh, and the values of you know working hard being patient uh, believing in yourself these are all uh principles and values that we find within our 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 faith and our religion really, and yeah. uh they're values that i think are not just for muslims but for all human beings mm-hmm. um and if we just hold on to these values and continue we can we can achieve uh what we hope to and what targets we set for ourselves and i think you started off this um podcast by saying you start off your week by planning it yes um and that's 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 really important how Or, or what do you see happening because empowered women networks just started up yes um what's the future for empowered women network what do you hope to achieve in the next five years um i just hope to create more podcasts i'm sorry not more podcasts <laughs> um I you can't create more podcasts yes. trust me. <laughs> no no <laughs> Um, no, we want to create a really big event after Ramadan, inshallah. inshallah. So I'm getting a lineup of amazing speakers um, of women in actual um, position to lecture about women in leadership. Um, I'm go- I'm hoping to get um, women from different professions to talk about running a business. Um, so it's not just um, just focusing on well uh, in terms of self development but also experience of running their own business in a particular field because some everybody is going to relate on some level um when when you're bringing someone from different areas and also from that it we want to create we want to be able to do it in a place where the girls can dress up and really feel special where they're celebrating their achievements as well when they're coming to these places and also for it to be a place where anyone can just come and, and network with these women and ask questions is it, are, are your events women only strictly or yes. 
at the moment and that's how you plan for them to be yeah this is just women only i mean not to say that in the future this can't grow um to, so that it will be women and men um in in our in our community um so that we can celebrate the professions in our community and network of course but at the moment this is this is what we're focusing on and we're just going to take it one event at a time and and see where it goes what could our viewers on the first level the women do to 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 help with with what with what you're doing or to participate in what you're doing and on the second level generally the community members both the males and the females what could they do with regards to maybe helping you empower the women in our community um definitely i'd love to connect with more women in our community from different professions who are also business owners definitely i want them to reach out to me so that i do start connecting with more that will be that, that could actually help me with these events and come as guest speakers um in terms of the uh, the men in our community I mean, you know it'd be amazing if there's something set up for the men to be able to also network in our community um and you know like this initiative can grow and grow so that we're not only just serving the women you know there's the the boys who are who are also graduating um from universities we want to be able to ha- we want to be able to have things prepared for our generation the next generation to come and help them out so i like i like this idea of uh, you know getting also uh the men in our community to sort of network and and build this um database maybe yes. where because there's a lot of people both uh who've maybe just finished university and then they 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 they, 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 they they're business minded people who want to start up their own business but mm-hmm. don't know how to exactly exactly and i honestly believe and mashallah we are, we've got so much talent in our community definitely agree so much and and agree. the younger generation they are savvy they are business savvy i've had some amazing conversations with the younger generation they are business savvy some of them are already setting up their little businesses on instagram mm. and i've been speaking to them and i'm like Wow. like you're only 19 20 there's some of them still at university and 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 setting up a business i mean it's just it's amazing and it, honestly it blows my mind i'm like wow at university i didn't even think about setting up a business yeah, i was no. just trying to get through my degree yeah so honestly so to be able to create a platform where we could they could connect with the right people to, you know that can help them go, go to the next stage in their business or get them into the right internships um when they graduate from university is amazing well if um, the viewers listeners want to get in touch is empowered underscore woman underscore network yes. on instagram yep. um, if you know of any sisters or any sisters want to get in touch then please do so you're already getting popular inshallah and then in the community and inshallah i pray that you that you achieve um, your targets and you empower the women in our community who i think um have the most difficult role of not only raising the future generation uh, but also um, hopefully raising leaders for our community absolutely no thank you and inshallah and i really i really hope um you know anyone out there who's who's struggling um can connect with us and you know hopefully we can help them as well if they need any advice i mean i can always business advice um so i'm qualified to do that and i'm you know I have a lot of uh, different girls that come that, that reach out to me on my own page on I home to call and I'm always happy to share their businesses. So yeah, if you want me to share your business, I'm more than happy to support also in that way. The empowered women network there's no charge for it. Everyone, yeah. everyone comes in for they don't have to pay to be part of this no, network. No, no. Okay. Amazing. So inshallah they uh, our sisters can get in touch. Uh, I'd like to thank you for making time um for this podcast and inshallah we hear uh great news in the future for both your business and of course for the um, uh, empowered women network thank you very much for having me thank you zainab